Okay, members and friends. Hold on a minute. Make sure I can see here. Okay. I kind of have this provincial supervisor when it comes to legal aid demonizing me here. Or it's legal aid. Um, I got this. This is my form to, to grant me a lawyer, right? Because I put a change of request for a lawyer. Because the first lawyer, you have to remember, I went months without a lawyer, right? I was denied a lawyer for a long time because they don't want to pay for grandmas, okay? Because they don't want grandmas to get the kids these days no more. They got bigger, bigger fish to fry these days, you know? They got other plans for these children. And uh, so they don't help the grandmas that much anymore like they used to, right? Only bad parents seem to get their kids, not good, not good grandparents, not good parents, just bad parents and bad grandparents get their kids because they can go out in the community and cause havoc, right, and, you know, poison other children and, you know, give them drugs and, you know, and beat people up and rob them and, you know, those people get to keep their kids, but kids that actually, you know, parents that actually try and keep their kids under wrap and, you know, kind of focused and stuff. You know, we, we get harassed, right? You know, we get mistreated. So anyway, this this first lawyer, after after I was told, you know, and that was only because my daughter's file and my file got merged together. Mine for custody and hers for whatever's going on. You know, we still don't know what, what, what Andre's being protected from. You know, nobody's sent anything, you know. The judge knows, the lawyer knows. Uh, and, and, you know, the, the social services know, but we ourselves, we still don't know. We don't have anything of substantial writing to express why they're protecting Andre um, uh, almost five months and a half later. Because we're going into five and a half months now, right? Because today is, what, the 18th? So we're going into the half month of the six, going into the sixth month. So, um... The only reason I did qualify for a lawyer eventually was because of the two files coming together. Now, the first lawyer, I put him down out of respect to the lawyer. Okay, I, I, I never met the guy. I only talked to him on the phone. And this was a referral from somebody that I know, right, over the years because she was my neighbor. You know, I lived in a duplex, and she moved in. I moved in, and she moved in, and that's how I met her. And then, you know, this happened with my grandson, and, you know, my girl is her friend's, you know, daughter. And so, you know, through the girls, that's how I know the woman, right? And she said, oh, well, try this guy, right? You know, he's a pretty good guy, you know, blah, 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 lots of experience. Okay, so finally, eventually, things get proved, right? And I said, well, okay, we'll start off with the top of the list, because I had met another guy, too, right? And, but to be fair, I thought, well, we'll just go with the first person that I spoke to. So that's, that's how we got the first lawyer approved. The only thing is, is he took my file and he just took it, looked around in his office and said, well, here, you want something to do? Take this. I'll just phone her up and tell her I can't do it. Chances are she'll just settle with who I offer his next best choice because you know I'll keep an eye on things so he phones me up and says oh, I can't take it on you know it's too complicated I don't have the time but here's this woman she can help you out she's in the office don't worry it's all good and I'm like okay well you know the, the file is there you know I trust your better judgment I suppose you know so I, I said okay fine but when I get down there, I get a $140 ticket because she tells me to be down there at 3 o'clock. I get down there at 5 after 3, my car gets towed and towed off, and it costs me $140 for a tar parking ticket, like a towing, towing $88 for towing, and a $50 freaking ticket, even though I put money into the meter and everything else. And, you know, my car was towed 10 minutes after I parked it with money in the meter. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is, you know, we get in there, and, you know, she was more concerned about just the social workers being overworked than, than my, my grandson being in jeopardy, my grandson being abused, my, my grandson being neglected, my grandson being, you know, just maltreated and psychologically, you know, abused and molested. 
right? And she didn't want to hear any of that. She was just, oh, well, social work, you can't change offices. It's just they're overworked and it's too complicated and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, but you can't force people to be in an abusive relationship with nobody. And if the social worker is abusive, God forbid, you do not have to be in an abusive relationship. Remove yourself from an abusive relationship. This is Canada. Okay, you don't put no freaking collar on my neck and whip me around and then turn around and say you're trying to help me. That's bullshit. People need to stand up and start saying no. So I just went home. You know, I thought about it. Got up that evening and I phoned and I left a message with that lawyer. I said, look, that lady's just something not right with her. She wants to sit up there and argue. You know, blame me. Sure, go out. I don't give a shit. You can blame me all you want. But at the end of the day, she's the one that opened up her mouth and said, well, the social workers are overworked and, you know, it's impossible to change change new social worker because it's just, it's just too complicated and they don't want to work. They don't want extra work. Well, what the hell do they do? They take kids, they put them in foster homes, and they visit once in a blue fucking moon. And all they do is scour around looking for some more. Because what these social workers do is they just take the kids to the lawyers. That's what they do. They just capture the little kid, go to the courthouse and say, oh, I got a new one. And the lawyers are like, oh, good, good. You know, that's money in the bank for us. Well, the judges are like, you know, next. Next, 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 next. It's like an assembly line. So I put a change of you know change of lawyer in. I went with the next guy on the list because after him, it's two duty councils that I dealt with when when I didn't have a lawyer. And he said yes, but you know, legal aid sends me this letter trying to suggest that. You know, they're demonizing me, right? I'm not the one that took the file and then gave it to somebody else that was non-cooperative with their client. Okay, that was the first lawyer that did that. I shouldn't be demonized for somebody else's actions. You have a responsibility to work cooperatively with your lawyer and to build a good working relationship with your lawyer. Well, first of all, the first lawyer passed me off to somebody else that just wanted to protect social workers. Okay? So, whose responsibility is that? Not mine. I removed myself from an abusive relationship. I do not want to have an abusive relationship with my lawyer that wants to sit up there and work for the enemy. Because these people are not nobody's friend, except maybe the corrupt lawyers and the corrupt judges that work this system so that they can make mad good money for themselves. Well, the rest of us go broke and get depressed while we do it. You must further understand that a resolution to your legal matter may not always end up with all parties, including yourself, being satisfied with the results. So, are they trying to tell me something? Are they trying to prepare me for something on on Monday, on Wednesday, on Tuesday? Sorry, today's Sunday. I'm going to court on Tuesday. That I that I should be prepared for disappointment? Kicked off my daughter's file so so they can come back and say you've been denied a lawyer now? You no longer qualify? Or what? They're gonna put it off someplace there so my lawyer now can fight for what? Custody? Why should I even have to fight for custody? My daughter signed over custody a long, long time ago. The father was running around. He had a whole freaking month to think about it. He wouldn't sign nothing till he fucking thought about it. And even then, he needs a DNA. Just because he's a freaking idiot. Once again, no further changes of counsel will be allowed on this file. So I'm out the chopping block before I even got on the fucking grandstand here. And that's because the first lawyer fucked it up for me. If he would have taken the job like he said he was going to take the job, I wouldn't have received a demonizing letter. You know what put a little more fear into me? Put a little more fear into my family? Is that it? Fear factor? Psychological warfare? I need help, and I don't need help from the B.C. Liberal Provincial Government other than maybe the Minister of Children and Family Development. 
She can help because it's her department that's crazy. These people are crazy. They force you to be in abusive relationships while they sit there and they try and, <coughs> excuse me, convince you that they're trying to help you. I'm sorry, you don't kick people out in the middle of the fucking winter time, take their children away, abuse your fa their family members, your siblings and your mother and your grandparent, okay? And then come back months later, right before court, and say, oh, well, you got to sign this, but don't worry, I'm your friend, I'll help you. You know, we'll, we'll help you. Like, it's bullshit. This has to go to the Supreme Court. And it's got to come in on more than one level. Because... This flipping around with judges, you know, it, it, that's just, that's, that's, you know, that's just, I don't know. I don't know. It's a joke. It's a joke what's going on with families right now. And it's the truth. Social workers are working for the lawyers. Not all the lawyers. Obviously not everybody is corrupt. But there's a lot of corruption going on here. Because these women, they're just capturing these babies to take them to the courthouse. So everybody can sit up there and say, oh, we're thinking of the children. When in fact these children are rotting away in foster care. Just rotting away. While the foster care give caregivers are laughing away. Laughing and can't brrrm, brrrm, brrrm with the money. Bling, bling, bling. Bling, bling, bling. So, with or without a lawyer, I don't know. I, I, I found this to be very, I just opened it today. I found it to be very demonizing. So, I guess I'm going to have to write a response in writing and remind them that the first lawyer that was signed on officially after waiting months and months for an approval for a lawyer, right, was the one that passed the buck, not me. And then, not only did he pass the buck, but he passed the buck to somebody that wanted to sit up there and defend a social worker before she defended a child. That's abusive when you want the child home where he belongs. Okay? And we don't have to be in abusive relationships. Okay? Nobody can force you to be in an abusive relationship. And people cannot penalize you for choosing not to be in an abusive relationship. So I'm going to have to write legal aid, explain to them that I don't appreciate being demonized for choosing not to be in an abusive relationship because the, the, the lawyer was more interested in working for the social worker, which my daughter has that problem with right now with her own lawyer. And she tried to fire him. I wrote the letter. She signed it. It was witnessed. We faxed it. And he sent something two days after the fact in the mail, dated. So I guess he's not taking it serious. Right? Why? Because she won't qualify for a new lawyer? Well, under these circumstances, she'd be better off to represent herself. And then... This corrupt system can really have a heyday with it. Because at the end of the day, there's only so much that corrupt lawyers, corrupt judges, and corrupt social workers can do with the defendant standing there with nobody to defend them because there is no one to defend them. Because those good people have been pushed out. So, are they going to push out the good ones? So they can keep the bad ones in there and keep the ching ching, ching ching, next, ching ching, next, ching ching, next, ching ching, ching ching, next, assembly line going. This is the slaughtering of children. British Columbia, Canada, I don't know about the rest of the country in the United States, but I know they're doing it too. But this is the slaughtering of children. This is like a slaughterhouse. And not only are they slaughtering the children, but they're slaughtering the families. So anyway, I'm going to be taking this to the Supreme Court. I'm going to take it more than one way. And I'm going to need help for the people that actually care. 
right? I realize there's a lot of people out there that don't give a shit because they got their own problems and it's all about money for them. But that's fine. You live your life. I don't have a life anymore. My life has gotten ruined. My kids' lives are getting ruined. My grandson's life is ruined. My daughter's life is ruined. So when your life is ruined and you've got nothing to look forward to, you've got no joy in your life, no happiness in your life, because these are devil worshippers that we're dealing with. Oh, check this out. What is this? Isn't this interesting? Hmm? Look at that. It's amazing I found that book, huh? Freemason. The Invisible Cult. In our midst. I mean, what's the chances of finding that book? Maybe they put it there for me. Huh? In the, in the, what do you call it? <coughs> in the, uh, cookbook section. <laughs> I found it among books like this. It was kind of just there. I haven't read it yet because it's depressing. I only just looked at little bits and pieces of it. But this is what we're dealing with right there. So yeah, I'm going to just add this right at the very end of the last one there, right? So nothing but depression, you know, nothing but hurt and sadness and, and games, you know, these people play games, right? You know, they're just, they're just, they've given my children nightmares, like literally nightmares. And I don't know how they can walk out in society with their head up held high. Because since my grandson's been in foster care, he hasn't gained any weight since the last time his mother has seen him. He developed a penis infection because he was probably molested. And nobody wants to investigate that. And if he wasn't molested, he was neglected. Okay? Because he's been neglected. He was doped up to control his behavior because that's the only way these people know how to parent. Okay? They got to use drugs to do it. But it's probably some government thing that they need these little babies as test subjects. And that's why nobody's stepping up to the plate to do anything about it. Because they don't give a shit. Because it's not happening to their kids. But they're making money off. And this family, we sit here and we think about this every day. We're going into court number nine, which the social workers want, because then they can say that we are wasting the judge's time, when in fact it's the social workers and the lawyers that are doing it. The shill of a lawyer. Because we really haven't had anyone represent Andre yet. Okay, because the Ministry of Children and Family Development is not representing Andre. They're destroying him. Okay, and my daughter's lawyer is not representing my daughter, and he's sure in the heck not representing my grandson. He's representing himself and his, and his partnership with his assembly line of children that are coming through the door because he cares about them. No, he doesn't care about them. He's a shill. And I hope it echoes through the courthouse. And then maybe he might learn to humble himself a little bit. And if it means parents going into the courthouse without lawyers because we can't find a legal representative that's honest and decent and has ethical morals, well, sooner or later, it's going to bring down the house of justice. That's what it's going to do, because you're going to have all these, all these parents standing around with no lawyers, with the lawyer standing over there, and everybody's going to look like a fucking idiot. But better to look like an idiot than be an idiot. A house of depression. It's not a house of justice. It's a house of depression.